another day, another blizzard. So I guess that means that I'm making more videos. Today's video, we're gonna keep talking about texture. The next texture that we are going to focus on would be trees. Um, now I'm not focusing on close up leaves. What I'm actually going to be looking at is if we were to look at the trees kind of from a distance. So basically what I'm gonna do is just roughly sketch out the shapes of some trees here. I'm not worrying too much about accuracy or anything at this point, but my goal is to have a variety of spacing here. Maybe some little shrubs. <clears throat> now when we look at trees from a distance, we can't see the individual leaves. We can't see the individual pine needles on these pine trees. Um, instead, what we end up seeing is actually just a variety of textures and values. So we want to simplify this down into just those base textures and values. So for example, as I'm looking at a tree from a distance, I might see like hints of the main trunk of the tree kind of peeking through the layers of branches. Um, when I look at the branches of the pine tree here in this reference, um, they kind of come out almost parallel but slightly angled downwards. So I'm just going to kind of block out some rough spacing here. I'm not worrying too much about intricacy yet at this point. And so I'm just going to do that with the variety of the trees that I'm seeing. So some of the trees that we're looking at, the branches do move upwards and some slope downwards. Some of them change depending on where the branches are on the tree too, so that's something to keep in mind. And other trees are a little more filled out and, you know, clumpy. So I think it's just entirely dependent on the type of tree you're drawing. So you want to just kind of like squint at it. Look at it from a distance or squint your eyes so it becomes fuzzy. And just look at like the basic shapes that are being created in that object. So, you know, we aren't looking for crisp, tiny details. We're really just looking for generalities here. So as I look at these trees, maybe I'm just going to work my way over. This one's kind of clumpy. So what I'm going to do is really just kind of look at those clumps and kind of make some basic general shapes dividing up the values and the clumps. So I'm not worried about any kind of detail at all at this stage, just clumps. Um, and from here, I'm going to start kind of making some scribbly marks, like very tight scribbles. And I feel like that gives me a really nice leaf-like texture, um, or in this case, pine needles. So I guess my scribbles are a little more jagged to give it more of that piney feeling. And I'm just going in and out here, um, creating those little staggered sections of values. And I notice as I'm looking at it, some of the clumps kind of come forward and then it's shadowed kind of behind them. So I'm going to just roughly block that in. We might see little hints of branches kind of peeking through. And as our trees get further away in the distance, so the trees that are kind of behind our foreground, we're going to see even less texture. So it's going to get kind of smoother and smoother as it goes out, like less individual details, more just values. And that's just because, you know, things that are further away, we can't really see those textures easily. Um, they're too far away to pick anything in particular out. So as I do these values, um, I can go in with my eraser and kind of pull out small sections. I can do a layer that's blended and then go back over it. 
There's a lot of different ways you could go about doing it, and it's really all going to be kind of dependent on what sort of style you want to work in. So, you know, I could go in and blend first and then add my details on top of it and might add the textures back in. So I'm careful to kind of like leave areas where my highlights are. I don't want to overdo my shadows. I'm making very sort of like small squiggly marks to cr give you kind of like the indication of clumps of pine needles, but I'm not drawing any individual needles here at all. I can kind of use my eraser to pull out those highlighted areas, play with texture, and then I can go back in and start defining shadows. So maybe like the undersides of the clumps we might crisp up our edges just a little bit to make those kind of stand out more. The key with this is we don't want it to be too consistent of a pattern um, because most things in nature have variation. They don't necessarily ascribe to a very consistent pattern. They might have some like similar areas or like a, a vague pattern, but they're not going to be precise. There's always going to be some kind of variation happening. So we want to make sure that we're not being too consistent in the way that we are creating these textures because it might make it look fake and we don't want that. So like I did when I started, I'm really kind of focusing on sort of jagged scribbly marks here. They're very small. I'm not like filling the whole page with them. They're very controlled scribbles to kind of create those bunches of needles. And again, this is very similar to how I would do leaves on a deciduous tree. Um, they would just be a little rounder. And, and obviously like the clumping shapes would be slightly different. So the left side is where the light is striking. So I'm going to have a lot more highlights on that side. So I'm really just kind of focusing on creating the shadows where the clumps of pine needles kind of overlap and to create sort of the highlighted branches that are you know defined by the light hitting them I need to create their edges by making the shadow of the trees behind them in the background and that's going to help kind of build up that form as we go so because the trees behind this main one are further away, we are not really going to see many of the details here. So it's mostly just shadow. And then as I get closer to the top, I'm going to play a little bit more with the texture of the leaves and also the value as it gets closer to the light. Another thing to consider when you're working with trees in particular is just like the pattern of the leaves is not a perfect pattern. It's, it's more irregular. Um, so are the branches. You know, our branches aren't going to be perfectly spaced. They aren't going to, you know, be all the same length or go be going in all the same distance or direction. Um, so we want to be sure that we are, you know, informing ourselves on the way that those things are moving because that's really going to help us create a better sense of depth and space and variety and it's going to give you a more accurate looking image. So I'm going to use my blending stump to kind of blend out the background more. Um, because again, things that are further away, we see much fewer details, much less texture as it gets further away, and the objects that are closer to us are going to have a lot more detail and texture because they're closer to us. I can use my eraser to kind of pull out my edges and kind of make it a little less uniform. Pull out some of the highlights on the trunk and we'll do kind of a similar technique on these other trees over here. 
as this tree is closer, we can start to see a little bit more of like the clumping of the needles in certain areas. So I might, you know, make more explicit shapes of those clumps. So on this side of the tree, I'm starting to see more of the individual branches kind of coming off. So I'm kind of playing with their shape and, you know, making sure they're not doing the same thing. They're not the same branch every time because that would make it not look very realistic. Um, we also want to think about, you know, the branches might not all be starting at the side of the trunk. They might be more towards the center of it and moving outwards. This is going to give us a better sense of depth, even though we can't quite see all of it, knowing that is going to help us a lot. As I get closer to the top, I'm seeing fewer of the whole branches and more of the clumps of needles instead. And because they're on the light side, I'm really leaving them open to sh let the highlight kind of shine through here. And there's just a light value behind them of the background. And we'll build up some of the branches with some needles, but not all of them. You want to keep some of those highlights free. I used my eraser to kind of pull out some horizontal lines across the trunk. And that is helping to create some bunches of needles that would be in front of the trunk. And as we move to our trees that are kind of not fully in the background, but almost to the background. I'm just going to do kind of like a, you know, quick scribbly texture to create those sort of mid-tones. Maybe we'll see a little bit of the trunk peeking through some of the main branches. We're not going to see all of them. And then I'm still really thinking about where the light is. So where am I seeing shadows? Where am I seeing highlights? We want to play with those because that's going to help define the edges of everything else. So I'm using the marks I'm making for the mid-ground tree here to define the edges of this tree closer to us. That's in highlight. And then as I move upwards, I'm going to get just lighter in value. And to push it back further, I think I'm going to just kind of blend a little bit because again, the smoother it is, the more it's going to sit back in space. And then for the shrubs in the front, it's going to be kind of a similar technique to the trees and also how I did the clouds. Um, so I'm going to think about like the shapes of the pieces kind of closest to us and then use the shadows that are created by the overlap here to help define the different layers as we go across. And I feel like these shrubs have kind of relatively spiky leaves. So I'm going to, you know, use more spiky marks with my pencil and that's going to help create some of those different textures. I might see some, you know, hints of branches kind of making their way out. So I'll just gently kind of place those in. So I'm thinking about the clumps that I'm seeing in the shrubs. You know, some areas might be slightly darker. Some areas might be slightly lighter if they're kind of coming towards the sun or not. And I'm going to, you know, really focus in on uh, not really blending as much here because these are the closest things to us. So they're going to have the most texture. 
I might just do a little bit of blending, but I'm definitely going to go back in with my pencil and like pull out those like more deliberate textures again. Um, and then really like focus on letting those values that are behind the leaves really help give us the feeling of depth by defining our edges. So I'm kind of playing with my directional marks, like as the grass gets closer to me, I can actually start, you know, making some grass-like textures rather than just working horizontally. Thinking about where light and dark meet, and how those lines get defined. I'm very gently using my blending stump to just vaguely soften the marks that I made with my pencil here. I'm working in a very scribbly motion so that I can kind of maintain that similar spiky leafed texture. And then I'm going to go back in with my uh, Tombow eraser and pull out some more of those highlights again, some of the ones that may have gotten covered up or lost a little bit. Um, if you don't have an eraser like this, honestly, my favorite eraser to use is the end of a brand new mechanical pencil. Like if you have a new one, it's that crisp edge. I love using those for hair and highlights in hair because um, you can get like a really tight, clean line if it's a brand new eraser. Um, so honestly, that's a great substitute, probably cheaper. <laughs> uh, you know, work with what you got. All right, that feels like some really nice textures for shrubberies and leaves. Stay tuned for more videos on how to create different textures with graphite. Thanks for watching and keep creating.